What's up, guys? Welcome to That Creative Life. It's me, James Mathis, and man, it feels good to say that. I have been slacking on making YouTube videos. No excuses, just family and church and life in general, playing lots of music. It just happens. But I did want to come on here and make a quick video about what's on my pedal board 2024. As I'm a worship leader, I want to share how I'm doing some of the things I'm doing. Also plan on taking you up to the church and showing you how we've got things run and how I've set it up because I've had to basically set up a live stream setup and a worship board setup with the in-ears and everything. And I've never done it, never seen it done. So I've had to figure it out. So I want to share in case y'all want anything like that. But that's not the point today. Today is what's on my pedal board 2024. So let's roll that intro and let's dive on in. Boop. Hope you like that opening lick. I'm really digging how my board sounds. It's not anything like it was before. It's vastly different because I had been running a Helix, but I've noticed in 2024, everybody's kind of moving away from the big all-in-one units and I did unintentionally. It's kind of funny how it worked out, but instead of using the Helix, I've got a whole different setup. So let's dive on in. First up on my chain is my wireless rig, which is the Shure. I had to pull it up because it's got a weird name. GLXD 16 plus, which is the pedal board version where it has the tuner on the on your pedal board, stomp it, and it allows you to mute. Also, super close range, so you don't have to worry about a lot of interference stuff. I really like this wireless rig, as long as the pack will stay on my strap, which I end up having to put my strap through it. It's a whole thing. It works great. I love it. It's reliable. Battery lasts forever. Highly recommend it. Let's move on to next in the chain. Next up is the classic Ernie Ball Jr. volume pedal. It's the one that everybody has, everyone loves, everybody knows. The string will break probably in a week or two. That's just how it goes. But right now, that's what I have. Eventually, I'd like to upgrade to the Dunlop Mini. But for now, it's working just fine. Let's keep going. Next up is my Make Everything Just a Little Bit Better pedal. It's a compressor. It's a boost. It's an EQ pedal all in one. It's the Jackson Audio Bloom highly recommend it. it's like the most boring pedal to have to buy but then once you have it you never turn it off i leave the compressor and the eq on all the time i use the boost to kind of push the volume up when i need to play a solo or be heard so it really comes in handy as just like a all-in-one you need these pedals but i don't want to buy three different pedals so here's one that has them all and it sounds fantastic there's different compressors in it highly recommend it next Next up is one of those pedals that I would consider a grail pedal for myself. I have always wanted a brown protein and I have one now. It's the version two, so it has the side mounted jacks. I don't care. It sounds incredible. You have a blues breaker on the left. You have a Nobles ODR one on the right. Two of my favorite pedals of all time. It sounds glorious. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, next, you cannot be a good worship guitar player without at least one JHS pedal on your board. And so I have the Kilt V2 with the red button. That way I can switch between a distortion and a fuzz. I don't use fuzz often, but I love using the distortion as a lead sound, especially with the lots of reverb, which you'll hear, I'm sure. I'm gonna put videos all throughout this, but that is my lead sound and I love the way it sounds. It's a phenomenal pedal. If you don't have it, check it out. It can go everywhere from like a boost all the way up to like fuzz and like a gritty, where it kind of like statics out fuzz. And I love it. Fantastic pedal, highly recommend it. So I am not a chorus guy or even a modulation guy at all, but for the context of worship, it's used a lot. And so I have found one that I can tolerate. And when I say tolerate, I actually genuinely love the way it sounds. And I've been finding myself using it more and more because it sounds so good. And it's the Walrus Audio Julia. It's a very standard pedal. It's a mono. You can get the Juliana, which is stereo and has tap tempo. I don't need all that. I'm not using it like that. 
the way I use it, it is perfectly fine. And so the Julie, I highly recommend it. it sounds great. It sounds like this. Okay, so the heart and soul of my board used to be the HX Stomp, then the Helix, but I have moved away from the Line 6 products and now I am using the Tone X. And the reason why is instead of modeling, this is capturing an actual amp. And it has been a dream of mine to own a Morgan AC20. I don't have Morgan AC20 kind of money. Ergo, I use the Tone X with the Worship Tutorials Morgan AC20 preset. Sounds fantastic. Highly recommend Worship Tutorial presets for any device that you use any way like that, whether it be Tonex, um, Helix, whatever. They have the best presets in the game. I love them. Plus, they are just genuinely great guys. Um, highly recommend them. But the Tonex, Morgan AC20, I use that as a clean sound. That's my amp of choice, and that's how I run my Tonex. Moving on. Last but not least, I call them the brothers. It's the Strymon Timeline and the Strymon Big Sky. For me, you can't have delay without reverb or vice versa. They go together and just work together in this glorious way. I just, you, you can't beat them. They are the top of their game when it comes to reverb and delay. Although I have seen now that they have the Big Sky MX. Don't get me started. Thing that looks really cool, but for my needs, the Big Sky is more than enough. That and the timeline together sounds fantastic. They sound like this. Okay, and so I have been playing off and on a Tele and a Gibson Les Paul. Those are my two guitars that I use. They both sound great. I have it set up with on the Tonex with zero input trim. Don't have to change anything between the two guitars just to have a different sound. And that's kind of the point is to have a different sound. Variety is the spice of life, they say. So I love using both of those guitars. It sounds great with my pedal board, but I can also turn off the Tonex and use the compressor, the EQ, the chorus and the re reverb and delay with my acoustic electric. And it sounds like this. I've also heard rumored that you can put an IR of an acoustic capture into the Tonex and run it that way. And I'm going to try that. I just haven't done it yet. I've got to find where I put my acoustic IRs because I have some, but don't know where they are. Anyways, once that's done, I may make a video about that, but it sounds great even without it. I love the way my pedal board's sounding and as a worship leader, I need to be able to fill in on rhythm, lead acoustic, wherever I'm needed. So having the ability to just jump around and have all those sounds at my disposable is such an incredible thing. And so as a worship leader, I'm not saying you need to go out and go crazy by any means, but whatever will serve the music to allow people to not be distracted by the music. You can get too crazy and have wild sounds and it's distracting in this concert. And that's not the point. The whole point of worship is to praise God and worship God. And so if you can do that with what you have, awesome. For me, this is the setup that works for what I'm doing and what I need right now. And so... That's where my heart is. That's where my pedal board is in 2024. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned. I'm going to talk about the way we have stuff set up at the church. So if you have any interest in live stream or sound boards or anything like that, stick around. You might like it. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. See you next time. Bye.